hello everyone in this video i am going to share with you about a normal distribution table construction pdf and its graphical representation using excel but before that we need to first find out a data if data is not available with us we can work on the random generated data with the help of excel so for that we can click on the data tab and under the data tab we can see this data analysis let's say if this add-in is not available it can be installed so first i will share for the mac under mac you can click on the tools on the top bar and in that tools we can see this excel add-ins when you click on it you can get an add-ins available which is uh, analysis tool pack is required for it so this must be selected uh, solver add-in we don't use it for the time being but if you want to select you can select it it is required for the calculation work so when you click on ok it will be installed and if you are using a uh, windows for that what you need to do is if this data analysis is not available under the data tab you can click on the file top left and when you click file you can see at the end an options tab if options is not available you can see the more when you click on more then options will be available so select the options under the options there is a add-ins so click on add-ins and then you get a this dialog which creating a analysis tool pack must be selected and under the manage you can click the go tab when you click on do go tab it will again give you a dialog box which is again including this analysis tool pack so you can click it you can click all of these but for the time being of the data analysis this tab must be selected so you can click on this checkbox and okay in this manner it can be installed so these are the two different ways for different system now let us begin with the work now i need a data so i will click the data analysis and in the data analysis the first is under the random number generator click on ok now you have to uh, give some inputs so first they are asking the number of variables so it is one number of random numbers uh, i pick a 1500 data set now since i want to work over the normal distribution so i will click normal it will ask the important inputs for the parameter mean and standard deviation so for time being i am taking the 15 as a mean value and uh, four as a standard deviation now i have to select this uh, let me see yes so just below this first uh, cell i have used for the label part and i want to click on a2 so my cursor is there so it means this a2 is selected so i'll click ok uh, the 1500 entries will be provided by the excel under the data analysis tab now I can use it for my further part of this normal distribution uh, study on Excel. Uh, but for rest, most of the part of this Excel work, I need some uh, statistical summary related to this data. So what we can do, we can again make use of the data analysis. And for that, we will go for descriptive statistic. In a descriptive statistic, what I need to do is I have to pass in the data for that. So what we can do for input range, take your cursor to the first entry. Control shift down is the shortest way to click all the entries at a one click. And then you can uh, use the label in the first row if you are starting from A1. So you can see I have selected my data from A2. That means I have not selected the data which is a label part. So I have skipped this first cell. So for that, I don't need to click the labels in the first row. If I would have started from A1, then I will click it, right? So since I have not selected the data in my selection entry, so input range selection entry, so I'm not going to click it. Now it is asking me to give the in output range. So I have given a C1 as nearby to it. And remember this this summary statistic should be included so it is already there so you can click on ok so all the important information or summary statistic is available for this current data 
now what I need I need this mean so I'm going to highlight it because for the further discussion it is required uh, I don't want that I want to highlight it so I'm going to highlight it and I need standard deviation also so I'm going to highlight that too minimum value is important for the classification so minimum value I should know what it is maximum value I should know what it is and range is also important part for the classification so I'll select that one okay, these are something important which is required so in the next step I want to uh, make a frequency distribution since 1500 entries I want to classify by taking a class size you can say or a bin size so here we are using the word bin so how do I find the bin size so that I can get an idea how many bins can be selected so I will say so for that what I can do I will look for what is the range of the data set so almost 27 to 28 between 28 uh, all the entries are covering up so if I say maximum of the 20 bins I can create so accordingly it has given me that create a bin size of 1.39 or 1.4 so I think the more appropriate selection would be I am going to take 1.5 here because 1.5 is a wise decision so I will begin with my bin because I have to pass this information to the excel for my next task so I should know what should be my first entry of the bin we can see that 1.2 something is my first minimum entry so it should fall over something so what I can do is I am going to start my first entry as a 1.5 because if I take 1.5, 1.2 is less than it, so it will fall in it. So 1.5 is my first value. And since bin size are selected as 1.5, that means next value will be 1.5 plus 1.5, which is 3. Now I think two entries are enough to give idea to the Excel to provide me all the bins which should contain this last entry maximum entry 29 so it means my last bin must be 30 or 30 plus so if I drag it till I get uh, I think 30 is the fine because 29 is less than 30 so we can get it so we got this bin creation now we are ready for the probability distribution construction of the current data for that we will again go for the data and data analysis and here we can click on the histogram so when we click on the histogram so let me just select it once again so it is asking me to give the input range so I am my input range I am again without label I will select Control shift down and it is asking me the second input for the bin range so we have already created a bin we just have to pass it so I'm going to click my first entry control control shift down and now where do I want my output range so just next to the bin so I took my cursor to the G1 now I think everything is available click on OK so you can see that uh, the frequency distribution is created so if you want you don't need the last one what we can do is to check the total number of entries we can take a sum for all the frequencies so pass the frequency entry control shift down enter so we can see the total sum is 1500 now what we need to do is uh, these bin is the mid value of any class interval containing all the data what we can do we want a PDF so I can do it in the next step but I'll prefer to make a column in between I need a two columns so I prefer to do like that before starting my next work let me make a proper table for that so my next requirement is a PDF which is also known as an empirical formula 
सो वट इज़ एन इम्पेरिकल फॉर्मूला फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ पी डी एफ विच इज़ इक्वल्स टू फ्रिक्वेंसी डिवाइडेड बाई नंबर ऑफ टर्म सो हे आर फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड वन नंबर ऑफ टर्म वी कैन सेलेक्ट दिस सेल और आई नीड टू देन फिक्स इट और वी कैन डू इट मैनुअली इट्स नॉट अ बिग डील वी कैन डू इट दैट वे ऑल्सो सो नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द सम ऑफ ऑल द प्रॉबिलिटी शुड बी वन सो लेट अस पास इट कंट्रोल शिफ्ट डाउन सो इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी So we can see that PDF is one. What else we want to uh, work on? As you know that it's a continuous data, but still right now we are taking a one entry. We are we are saying uh, probability of one point five is this probability of three is. So right now these are the discrete entry. Now to make it a continuous, we have to consider an interval which can take one point five to the lower and upper. so before jumping over to this normal approximation what we should understand i will take you to find a continuity correction it can be calculated by writing a bin size divided by 2 half of the bin size and then you will get the answer let's say if the bin size is 1 then continuity correction is 0.5 so in this case if you want to make a four as a continuous data you have to take 0.5 to the left of it and 0.5 to the right of it in that case it is uh, 3.5 and this will be 4.5 means 4 minus 0.5 4 plus 0.5 and we can uh, make use of the cumulative distribution so but right now let us take our current scenario in my current scenario i have this as a 1.5 this as a 3 and so on 4.5 and so on so for example if i want to make a us if 3 is a point and i want to make a continuity correction for that so i know that the distance between 1.5 and between 3.5 3 and 4.5 is 1.5 so what i need to do is i have to take a in between so i know that half of 1.5 is 0.75 so to make a 3 as a continuous i have to take 0.75 to the left and 0.75 to the right so what does it mean you know so what you need to do is for example if somebody say probability at x is equals to 3 can be converted into the continuous so you can create a 3 subtracting the continuity factor so currently we have a gap of 1.5 that's why we are getting this 0.75 and here we will add so this is not fixed it depends from question to question if your gap is 1 so it will be 0.5 if your gap is 1.5 then it is 0.75 if the gap is 2 you will get it 1 so it you have to just take a half of the width so whatever is the bin width you just bin size bin width whatever you can say and you know that whenever we are doing a continuous data and you want to find a probability in between you can find a cumulative distribution of the upper value minus cumulative distribution value of the lower so it means if i want to find out the probability of this this is by a empirical rule you are getting from the previous uh, page and if you want to make it a continuous you need to find out the probability of x which is less than 3 plus minus probability of x 3 minus this continuity correction and in this manner it can be calculated so let's say if i want to apply this formula over my first cell so what i need to do is i will use the normal distribution function in the normal distribution function i need to give the input of x mean standard deviation and cumulative so my bin at for this cell is 1.5 and since we need to apply this logic i need to apply this logic that if this is my discrete data i will find the upper value by adding the continuity factor to it minus the lower value so same logic is being applied here so i will add 
the continuity correction which is half of the 1.5 0 0.75 comma I have to pass the mean value so it is mean fixed for all the data standard deviation and since we are taking a cumulative distribution so we can put the true value here before I take the same formula and use a minus with 0 0.75 we should first uh, fix the mean and standard deviation and the shortcut key for this is uh, function plus f4 so we need to put a dollar sign because in all the cells we have to pass this formula so we should freeze the mean and standard deviation now uh, we have to subtract the value lower to this 1.5 so I'll copy it subtract but this we have to add it now you can see this carefully this is a command for the this bin upper value I need to point 0.5 point is missing here point so point 0.75 add same mean same standard deviation true point minus 0.75 subtract so in this manner we will get a approximated pdf at a point 1.5 means this pdf this pdf is at a point and this pdf is for the interval which interval which is from uh, minus to 1.5 to plus to 1.5 and that is more approximated so when we will uh, pass this formula to rest of the bin entries we will get it and if you want to see that what is the total sum for the probability it is approximately very close to 1.99 now we are observing that uh, we calculated one discrete based empirical rule based pdf and one is approximated and if we want to see the graphical presentation to get a more clarity go to insert you can use a recommended chart or I am going to make it uh, this scatter plot with the smooth lines and marker so just see that part you can see how the picture look like this orange color graph is for the approximated one and this blue one is for the, uh, the empirical rule based probability distribution and you can see that more you are converting into a continuous data it will be more smoother more better and you can see that from here the uh, maximum value at the mean we can see that this normal approximation will convert the data into more bell shaped uh, more symmetric so i hope you got an idea thank you so much for watching